Discover the root cause for your actions instead of focusing on the surface. What Christians do is they stay busy trying to deal with the fruit. But unless you deal with the root, it will always pop up somewhere else. Stay tuned next. series here called Burnt But Not Bitter. <laughs> I want to just very quickly give a short recap from last night because I think it's necessary to kind of know where we're at here. There was a few key things that I said that I would not want you to miss. First of all, what does it mean to be burnt? We're not talking about burned by fire. We're talking about being taken advantage of, used abused, lied about, lied to, cheated, deceived, misunderstood, forgotten. All those hurtful things that people do to us. I made the statement last night that probably 70% of people at any given time in any Christian gathering like this are mad at somebody. You say, oh, I don't believe that. Well, I've been preaching for 25 years. And any time that I have spoken on bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, strife, offense, and ask at the end of that teaching for all those that were convicted that there was somebody in their life they needed to forgive, I have never, never, not one time in any meeting ever had less than 70 to 80% of people in the meeting get up for prayer. So that tells me that we have a big problem. And it needs to be dealt with. Because if we do not learn how to be mistreated and leave it up to God to be our vindicator, if we keep trying to fix everything ourselves and shut all the people out of our life that don't behave the way we want them to, then we are not walking in unconditional love and we are poisoning our own spirit. Many people have a root of bitterness in their life. Sandra, I need my prop. Many people have a root. I know you're busy getting cute there, putting on your lipstick, but... <laughs> Last night I called her up here and she said, Oh, no, I don't have any lipstick on. Many people have a root of bitterness in their life. And, you know, a root is something that's kind of underground. You don't, it's not sticking up. You don't see it. But for every root, there's a fruit. It's those obvious things. And a lot of times what Christians do is they stay busy trying to deal with the fruit. But unless you deal with the root, it will always pop up somewhere else. Always. In other words, maybe you're bitter because your father abused you. Or you're bitter because your mom got involved with another man and left the family and... You just don't understand how she could do that to you. Or maybe you're bitter because you were given up for adoption and you don't understand that. Or maybe you're bitter because you prayed for something and didn't get it. Bitterness poisons your life. It makes you sour. It makes you unhappy. It makes you hard to get along with. And I would even go so far as to say it makes you sick. People who love God don't want to have bad fruit in their life, but very often they spend all their Christian life trying to deal with the fruit and they never get deep enough to find out what the real root of the problem is. In other words, you may be angry because really you're bitter because somebody abused you in your childhood, but now you're manifesting all this bad behavior. Can't get along with people. Angry, easily offended, hard to get along with, touchy. And you keep... 
you hear the word that you shouldn't be like that, so you keep trying to change those bad fruit in your life, but you've never once dealt with the root. You see, a lot of times we think when we walk away from a problem physically, then we no longer have the problem. But let me tell you, you can walk away from a problem and have it in you. So we stay busy as Christians. I mean, we're just working our heads off. Got to get rid of this temper. Be more patient. Be nicer. Submissive. Walk in love. What's wrong with me, God? No matter what I do, I still have a problem. <laughs> I deal with one thing and another thing comes up. Hello? So we're frantically... God, I'm just so tired of this. You got to deal with roots. You ever had a bad stink coming out of your refrigerator? You ever had one of those times where you just, I mean, you just thought, I can't stand this stink anymore. I've got to find out what this is. I mean, you stuck an air freshener in there and it didn't do any good. You threw away last week's meatloaf and it didn't do any good. You got rid of the onion, it didn't do any good. There's something rotten in here and I've got to find it. So you finally took the time to stop just putting room deodorizer on everything. Hello? Trying to cover up the smell. Come on. And you got yourself some hot soapy water and you took everything out of that refrigerator. I mean, you took the vegetable drawer out, you took the fruit drawer out, you took the meat drawer out, you got all the way down to the drain in the bottom of that refrigerator. You took that stinky rotten thing out that had all the gook hanging all over it. You pulled out the drip pan. You defrosted the refrigerator and finally, hidden down underneath the refrigerator, you found it. A stinking mess, old, foul, moldy water that stunk terribly. Did you ever say to anybody, you have got a stinking attitude. Your attitude stinks. You think that they know what's wrong with them? No. Or do you ever say to people, what is your problem? You think they know what their problem is? They don't know what their problem is because they've been putting room deodorizer on it for 50 years. You got to stop putting Christian band-aids on gaping sores. And we've got a lot of ministers that are trying to help other people and we don't need wounded healers. We need people that are whole that can lead other people into wholeness. And part of being a right leader is getting to the bottom of the issues in your own life. And don't stay so busy being a leader that you never take time to deal with your own stuff. Come on now. Because I'll tell you something, being a leader in the body of Christ is a tremendous responsibility. I, don't, I think sometimes we forget Everybody wants a reverend in front of their name, but I'll tell you something. <laughs> you know the boys who wanted to sit at the Father's right hand and left hand? Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking for. In James it says, teachers have a greater responsibility. They come under more condemnation than other people if they don't live the life. I'll never forget what God spoke to me. Never forget this as long as I live. When I was praying for my ministry to grow one day, he said, Joyce, I always want you to remember this. However many people you can help, that's exactly how many you can hurt. So I can stand here and say, praise God. Every day my television program is made available to 1.5 billion people in the earth today. But guess what? I would not want to stand before God. <laughs> if I was a phony. Because let me tell you something. Anybody that's a phony, sooner or later, 
it'll catch up with them. And contrary to popular opinion, worldly popular opinion, what goes on in your private life does affect your public life. And the Bible says nothing is so closely covered up that it will not be revealed. Nothing is spoken in secret that will not be spoken aloud on the housetop. Everybody say, God is watching me. So I think we need to go deeper in this day and hour, not just live on the surface of everything. The disciples were not happy because they had been fishing and didn't catch any fish. A lot of Christians are not happy because they're going through the routine, but they're not living in the inheritance. And Jesus gave them the answer. Cast your net into deeper waters and you'll find the hall that you're looking for. Some of us just are living too much on the surface and we need to come deeper. Why can't I control my temper? Why am I so impatient every time I don't get my way? Is it just the flesh? Maybe. Then deal with it. Read everything you can get your hands on about the crucifixion of the flesh. Find out how to die to self. Find out what, it, what, what spiritual maturity is. Let God deal with you. Beg Him to deal with you. Beg Him to put every obstacle in your way until every bit of your flesh is broken and crushed and liquefied and destroyed. <laughs> break me, God, break me. Bend my stubborn will. You say, well, I'm afraid to pray like that. <laughs> well, then you know what? You'll just keep wandering around in the wilderness all your life. You'll never make it to the promised land. Because if you don't want to be chastised and dealt with, if you don't learn how to love chastisement, That's right. a lot of the things that you think right now are your enemy, someday you'll find out they were indeed your best friend because those problems are what drove you to God. <laughs> woo -hoo. Well, I wasn't expecting this, but we'll go with it anyway. <laughs> How many of you are with me? A few weeks ago, I did a series on total transformation. And of course, in that series, I talked about the caterpillar that becomes a butterfly. Metamorphosis, complete change, which is what God has in mind for us. Complete change. We start out dealing with relationships one way, and by the time God is done with us, we can deal with people the way Jesus did if we will let Him do the work in us. You can go from it being almost impossible to forgive to being quick to forgive, and for it just being the most natural thing to do when somebody comes against you, just, <laughs> I forgive you, I ain't got no time for that stuff. <laughs> God will take care of it. <laughs> like Jesus, whatever you think. <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever you're, you know, take it up with God. <laughs> it's not my problem. I know who I am in Christ, what you think's between you and God. Come on now. It's a good morning here in Jacksonville. And I discovered when I studied this thing about the caterpillar, very interesting. The, the caterpillar, when it crawls up on the backside of nowhere or buries itself in the ground, burrows into the ground, see, uh, this work that God does in us needs to be, it, it's a hidden thing, it's a private thing. The caterpillar goes somewhere out of the open eye for this work to be done. And I don't mean you have to physically take off but sometimes you're going to have to zip your lip about what you're going through. Why do we tell people everything? Because we want them to relieve our pain anyway. That doesn't mean you can never share with anybody, but there's a balance. And so it, it crawls up on, let's say, the backside of a leaf somewhere on a tree and spins this web around itself. And the thing that I found so amazing was what happens inside that cocoon is the caterpillar completely liquefies. <laughs> Everything it was is completely destroyed, and now for a period of time, it's nothing. 
What am I going to become? <laughs> and then out of that total liquid, <laughs> God forms and fashions this beautiful, unique butterfly. You know, there are no two butterflies exactly alike. Nobody can chart or follow their flight pattern. Because when you're free, <laughs> you're just led by the Holy Ghost. And nobody, including you, knows what you're going to do next. You're just committed to follow the Master. Come on now. Oh, yes. If you want to go on to maturity, you're going to have to get ready to put up with some people that you'd rather just get away from. You're going to have to learn how to endure injustice and trust God to make it right. You're going to have to learn how to do the right thing for a long time before the right thing starts happening to you. You're going to have to learn in relationships how to treat somebody right that has maybe never treated you right, maybe for a long time, and then God will bring a reward. If not from that person, from somebody, but you'll get your reward. You can't do somebody else's part, but you are responsible to do your part. Am I talking about just laying down and letting somebody abuse you? No, I'm not talking about, you know, letting somebody beat on you every day or sexually abuse. That's not what I'm talking about. Some people have those problems, but the majority of people don't have those problems. And yes, those problems need to be dealt with, but I'm talking majorly here today about all the silly, petty, goofy stuff. <laughs> the self-protective mode we go into the defense mode that we go into. Come on now. Paul, uh, Paul said, if I were trying to be popular with people, I would not right now be an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you one thing you are going to have to get delivered from, and that is reputation. Because <laughs> you just cannot do the will of God if you are going to be concerned about your reputation. Not your family, not your, not even within your family. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to be a sold out, on fire believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, even your own family members will turn against you. It happened to Jesus. His brothers thought he was stark raven mad. <laughs> You'll lose friends. You'll be called a fanatic. A weirdo, out of balance, amen? But if you'll just hold steady, the day will come when many of those people who judged and criticized you will come to you just like Joseph's brothers came to him. They will come to you for help, advice, prayer. Oh, yeah. It happens. Be smart enough not to keep hurting yourself after somebody else has hurt you. You only hurt yourself when you stay bitter. The title of my message today is Better or Bitter, the Choice is Yours. You can let each event that comes into your life make you bitter or you can let it make you better. The choice is yours. Everybody say, the choice is mine. Because I'm telling you right now, there is nobody that can preach a message to you that's going to be able to tell you how you can avoid all the rude, obnoxious people in the world. It's an interesting thing about people. We have a difficult time getting along, but we can't do without each other. And one thing about people, they are everywhere you go. <laughs> you just cannot get away from them. They're everywhere everywhere. They don't leave you alone on the days when you want to be left alone. They're not there for you on the days when you want them to be there. 
If you don't want a clerk in the store, you've got five aggravating the living daylights out of you. And if you want to pay for something, you can't find anybody in the department to take your money. <laughs> you know how it is. If you're not in a hurry, the whole road is totally clear. <laughs> if you are in a hurry, there's always got to be some pokey person in front of you. Oh, yes. The day when you need encouragement, what do you get? Criticism. <laughs> they forget your birthday. They don't buy you a Christmas present. And even if they do, they buy you what they like, not what you like. <laughs> Nobody can preach a message to you that's going to keep you from having an opportunity to be offended. You probably have at least 50 opportunities every seven days to be offended. Did you hear me? You just get yourself a little pad and just start making a mark every time you have a chance to be offended. Yeah. You're just, many of you are just playing right into the devil's hands because every time he gives you an opportunity, you take it. And you keep hoping everybody will change. Well, they're not going to change. Come on, hear me loud and clear this morning. They're not going to change. You know who's going to change? You're going to change. You're going to change, and you're going to get so mature in Christ that they can't bother you. That is victory. Right in the midst of all of these things, we are more than conquerors. Not when all these things go away, we're more than conquerors, but right in the midst of them, we are more than conquerors. Woo! Glory. So you can let them make you bitter, or you can decide, well, I'm going to have things happen in my life that I don't like. Sometimes you feel like you're just having more than your share. Then you go through a period of time where it just seems like everything is great, and then you, something else happens that you weren't expecting. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be that way until Jesus comes back. <laughs> And you might as well just figure every time you decide to get in a relationship, that person is not going to perfectly meet your needs and perfectly make you happy all the time. I don't care who it is. Neighbor, friend, spouse, child. The closer you get to people, the more intimate you become, the more you find out about them, the more you're going to have to walk in unconditional love. Sometimes you can get along with people better if you don't know them so well. To be honest with you, I think that's sometimes why preachers have to kind of stay off in their own little corner because people put you up on this pedestal and they think you're not human beings. And so then if they realize that you're a human, they get all bummed out about it. And now they can't receive from you anymore because you're not perfect. Somebody will see me in the grocery store. <laughs> I can't believe it's you. What are you doing here? Well, we eat like everybody else. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but David, I have an argument once in a while. Sometimes, real frequently. You know, we all have to make a decision to either let bitterness ruin our lives or we can get to the root of the problem and let it make us better. Learning how to endure injustice and put your trust in God, believing that He will make things right, is learning how to be burnt but not bitter. Today on the program, we're offering a five-part teaching series. That's over five hours of God's Word. This series is entitled, Burnt But Not Bitter. So many people literally ruin their lives. They waste their lives staying bitter and angry at somebody who's out having a good time and doesn't even care that they're upset. I implore you to get this teaching series and begin to have freedom like you have never known before. Along with this series, we're also offering you a special blessing. We want to send you one of our worship CDs as a bonus gift. We have really put out some very good music here at Joyce Meyer Ministries, and we want you to enjoy some of it. Have you ever been
been treated unfairly? Has someone hurt you? Were you abused? Have you been loyal only to have someone be disloyal to you? No matter what you've gone through, you have to make a choice, become bitter or better. In this five-part series, you'll learn why God allows us to go through struggles, how tough times can prepare you for great things and give you hope that the hard times will pass. Learn how to forgive and even pray for the people who hurt you. You'll experience an emotional freedom like never before. Order your copy of this five-part series, Burnt But Not Bitter, and for a limited time, we'll include one of our worship albums to help you during your time of healing. It's free when you order Burnt But Not Bitter today. So don't delay. Call right now using the information on your screen or log on to JoyceMeyer.org. It's not too early to start thinking about this fall St. Louis International Women's Convention. Come be part of this 23rd annual Joyce Meyer Ministries event and experience life-changing teaching, dynamic praise and worship, and empowerment to become the woman God has called you to be. You won't want to miss the uplifting messages of Joyce Meyer. And the things around us do affect us. If you're around a bunch of depressed people, they're going to pull you down. If you're around people who encourage you and compliment you, they're going to lift you up and make you feel like you can do anything. With special guest Creflo Dollar. I'm fed up with it. You, you are not some second class Christian just because you are a woman. From Hillsong Church in Australia, Christine Kane. What the blood of Jesus does do is it gives us a life beyond our past to the awesome purpose and the awesome destiny that Jesus Christ has for us. And special music guest, C.C. Winans. The 23rd Annual St. Louis International Women's Convention at the Edward Jones Dome, September 29th through October 1st. Mark your calendars. Registration opens June 20th. Log on to JoyceMeyer.org for more information. And make plans to meet Joyce in St. Louis. Joyce Meyer believes that God has a future and purpose for your life and that you have an incredible destiny. Your monthly partnership plays an important key to that destiny as Joyce can impact your life on a regular basis, giving you new insights and information into God's Word through television, teaching tapes, our magazine, monthly letters, and more. Plus, when you join us in partnership, you're playing a vital role in making a difference in the lives of millions of people around the world. So call or write us and help us take this life-changing message to every nation, every city, every day. Plus, if you have any needs or prayer requests, please let us know, and we'll agree with you for God to make a difference. We also encourage you to check out our website at www.joycemeyer.org, where you can find important ministry updates, access Joyce's teaching resources, her travel schedule, visit our online bookstore, and more. So contact us today as you continue the journey, enjoying everyday life. It's time to start enjoying.